Thank you to our sponsors for today's video, Star Charge, Nokian Tires, and Amber. Star Charge is the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage and microgrid solutions. This video is also brought to you by Nokian Tires, a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made in USA all season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantires.com slash EV. This video is also brought to you by Amber. Amber offers a modern extended warranty for your Tesla's battery and more without the burden of long-term contracts or upfront payments. Check out the link in the description below to browse their plan options and get started with a free over-the-air diagnostic check. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to a video that truly could shape the future of EV charging and EV charging amenities to come. I really hope anyone who drives electric, who wants to operate chargers, or really anyone in the car industry, I hope you watch this video because this, I think, will pave the future for what an EV charging hub could and should look like. I'm visiting with BK World, and I'm with my friend Gerald, who is the CEO of BK World, and we're gonna be talking about charging hubs and some of his locations and these modular unmanned charging station amenities. If you guys remember, I did a video on one of the coolest charging hubs uh, about two years ago in Germany, and it's where we looked at this sort of pilot station for BK World. I took you on a full tour. Hundreds of thousands of people have watched that video now. And uh, since then, I didn't know anyone at BK World. I've gotten to know these guys a little bit. And they were like, you know what? Why don't you come? We just put in a brand new station. Come on a full tour. And Gerald will go and meet you there, the CEO of this company, and talk about the economics of providing amenities while charging, the fact that they're actually going to be launching this in North America and in other regions of the world, some of the production capacities that they have and their core competencies. Um, BK World and Tesla have just formed a pretty much official partnership where BK World is producing, managing, and uh, upkeeping a lot of charging hubs for Tesla stations. Right now, I think there's 15 of them. I'm at one right now. And I want to take you on a tour of this. So let's get into everything. BK World charging lounges. This is really exciting. Everything I love about my job, it right here, this is what I love to do, show you guys cool, innovative, new solutions to support the drivers of the future. A huge thank you to Chesapeake Climate Action Network Action Fund for sponsoring this out of spec video. Guys, we work with CCAN every year for their annual raffle where they give away some incredible electric vehicles. And this year, of course, the same is happening. There's not just one, but two prizes. They're giving away two EVs. And you guys have taken note because we've told you in the last couple of videos and have been purchasing tickets like crazy. And well, the raffle ends August 22nd and there's only 7,000 available tickets. The chances are incredible, as you can tell. Uh, and you've been buying tickets so quickly, CCAN reached out to us and was like, hey, if any viewers want to get in on this, they better do it now rather than waiting until the end because ticket sales are going very quickly. So first place prize, what could you win? Any Tesla, including the Cybertruck or any Rivian, R1S or R1T. The second place, first time for this year, is a Hyundai Ionic 5. Still an awesome electric vehicle. Really love that they're doing a second place car giveaway this time. All you have to do is head to evraffle.org. Tickets are $200 each. Again, only 7,000 available. Get your tickets in now. The chances have never been better to win an electric car in a raffle. And a huge thank you to Chesapeake Climate Action Network Action Fund for sponsoring this out of spec video. So I'm at a charging hub in Lindau and I'll take you on a tour of the site uh, with Gerald in a little bit. I drove down here in the Porsche Taycan Turbo GT. Uh, it said I was gonna be 45 minutes late when I left, but I arrived 10 minutes early. Thanks to that car going over 300 kilometers per hour. This is uh, Gerald's Model S Plaid looking great, very similar to mine at home. And here is the lounge. It's not about the cars, this is about the lounge. And there's been a few of these. I've been to a couple of them and it's such a cool invention. And what we're gonna do is walk through the entire modular process, how they build them. So this is not only carbon neutral, but Gerald claims carbon positive. There's no metal here. The whole thing is made completely of wood. 
There's an automatic pizza machine and they've dialed it in even more than previously. And of course the inside of the lounge is just absolutely amazing. Just being here for the last one or two hours here in Lindau, this is right off of a major highway. We've seen EV drivers from all over Europe. You can see we have Austrian drivers, Denmark, drivers, Norwegian drivers, all here on their European summer vacations, utilizing the functions of the lounge, utilizing the pizza machine, and really just goes to show me how needed of a solution this is. I think it's so cool for charge point operators as well to be able to build in a greenfield site, put it in where there's, you know, land is cheap, not necessarily near other restaurants or in high retail areas. They can build big hubs like this. Tesla plans to almost double this entire site right here sometime in the future. So they've built an extra capacity and then they can partner with BK World and BK World puts in all the initial investment to put in a hub like this. So as a CPO who has to spend a lot of money to put in charging and all of this stuff, well, BK World comes in, they build the site, they do all of the permitting and construction, and then they do a revenue share agreement. So the CPO can still benefit from the profits of BK World. It's really neat. Gerald will explain this, of course, coming up in the video. So don't listen to me. I don't know this nearly as well as Gerald does. I want to talk about him, his story, BK World as a company before charging. He's a longtime EV driver and I think really uh, paves the way for a lot of what we all think we want to do. He's actually doing it and building the hubs and building the lounges and it's just an awesome story, an awesome guy, and a really cool company. So join me for the interview and the full tour of the BK World Lounge. Guys, you join me with Gerald, who is the CEO of BK World. Welcome to the YouTube channel. Hey, Kyle, welcome here to Lindau. Thank you very much. You So I guess two years ago it was, like I mentioned in the beginning, we went to, what was the name of that town? Enzi, there is a more or less in the middle of Germany. And I didn't realize how close we were to the opening, but it was only just a few days after Yeah, it was eight days after the grand opening there. Yeah. And you just randomly saw our video pop up online because we didn't communicate about this. We didn't no. tell anyone. No, I, just... I, I didn't know you before. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was just filmed a video and that was the first charging lounge. Yes. And now how many charging lounges do you have? Uh, currently we operate 10. Yeah. And uh, in a few months we have 20. Wow, so really fast expansion happening. And what's really exciting from my side is this concept is coming to America? Real, yeah. In the next couple of months, we start also in North America with the first one on EV and truck charging. Okay, very cool. So can you say the locations as to where you'll be yet? I can say the region California. Okay. Yeah, that, that is uh, official. <laughs> okay, great. But I hope to be at the grand opening for this one because I'd like to film a video with you. Uh, so don't forget about me. Yeah. I want to film this. For sure, for sure. You are The invitation is now speaking though. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So um, we are in Lindau, which is near the Austrian border, near Lake Constance. It's an absolutely beautiful area. How did this location happen? Did Tesla call you and say, hey, we want to install a charging park. Can you bring us a lounge? How do these conversations happen? Yeah, that's a normal way that Tesla rent the, the whole property and say, okay, we can only operate this, this property, this charging park together with the BK World concept because we need amenity because there's no infrastructure right here. Uh, and then we say, okay, we check the location and say, okay, it's really working very well on the highway A7. I say, okay, we go with you. Uh, and then uh, Tesla rent the property and Tesla built the whole charging park. Yeah, so the supercharger and everything has been done by Tesla. Mm -hmm. And from our side, we have the, the area, the field for the BK world. And this is completely done by us. So we pay for them. Yeah, it's, it's completely our invest. It's not the invest from Tesla, okay. not from the CPO. It's our invest. And then we make the whole operations during the next 25 years, how long the charging park is open. So to walk us through a little bit on, I guess, your relationship with Tesla, your relationship with other CPOs, is you are not 100% directly tied to Tesla. You can operate with any CPO in any area. Right, right. It's not exclusive or limited by Tesla. Tesla is our first big client, yeah, but many, many more hopeful will coming in the future. And what I think is really unique is very rarely does Tesla partner with other companies. They typically just do it themselves. And so I think the a whole BK world plus Tesla combination is really exciting from my side because you clearly, and our audience will see this throughout, know how to build 
customer amenities really well thought out and it is of no cost to tesla really you're just going in to provide the amenity for the charging park in this particular case i see lots of open area as well what is going to happen you know sort of beyond the borders of this site yeah, on, on this side especially is that, that uh, Tesla expand with 20 more chargers there and uh, another CPO will come on this area. Wow. I can't really say currently wh where yeah. <laughs> and what uh, CPO, but there will be coming another one. Yeah, so then in totally we're talking about 60 to 70 chargers on this side. So how did you come up with the idea? I mean, you have been driving EVs for a long time. 14 years meanwhile, yeah. Yeah, one of the pioneers of EVs, especially in Europe. I mean, you really pushed this technology. And how did you come up with the idea to provide an amenity for charging stations? Where did this even start? So it was a dream by me. So I said, when I drive during these 14 years, during the night in the dark or 500 meters from the petrol station, there was the charging. I have to go in the night during the trucks from Romania and somewhere else. Say, okay, people, this is not working, yeah. Yeah, this system. We need, this is a completely new technology and we have to bring the EV drivers the, the right thing together. Yeah, and for that, we need an amenity when this amenity can't be a petrol station. So there have to be a difference and that, yeah, that was the idea behind. So uh, what can be and, and so on. And then I talk with, with Tesla because Tesla opened directly on my headquarters in NC okay. and own charging park. So rent this location there and uh, 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 construct the own charging park there. And that was the beginning to talk with them. What do you need? And they say, okay, we need a modular system, ideally directly on the highway and have the whole amenity, the whole infrastructure by us. Because we understand like the petrol station in the last 40 years, we make the money with the shop and not only with selling power. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the difference. We see that for the future thing. Yeah. And then we say, okay, we create a modular system. How can we work? And so we say, okay, we can start very small. And when we can expand then in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years or more, bigger and bigger and bigger. And then we create the modular BK World system. Wow, so what, so BK World, I've been to the first location at your headquarters. It was already an established company. What were you doing before this? Yeah, so I founded my company 25 years ago. And what we do is that we plan, construct and maintain retail stores all over Europe in 33 countries there. Um, and so that means for the big uh, brands like Louis Vuitton, Hermes, Swarovski, uh, Tommy Hilfiger, and then, and, and, and then we create their stores. Mm, so we make amazing. the whole planning, building permits, the whole construction work, like a general constructor, do everything. And then we do the, the facility management afterwards. So this is where the construction knowledge comes from, because I know BK World was already a huge established company. And I was like, why are these guys going on these small little charging hubs? Yeah. <laughs> like, what, what so we, we are not a startup. It's for us a, a additional field mm -hmm. yeah, and we bring all by us. So we have the own architects to plan that. We have the construction to build them on site and we have the technicians to maintain this afterwards and the operation. This makes a difference. And this was the thing for Tesla say, OK, the operation, we need something for the operation. A building, OK, that mainly can do every everyone. Not so easy, but they say that it can be everyone. Yeah, yeah. But the operation, that makes a difference. Sure. So the, the magic is not necessarily in the design of the hub, in the construction of the hub. It is the operations. It's making sure all of the drinks are perfectly laid out. It's making sure it's cleaned. I just met some of your, your maintenance staff here. They yeah. were super nice. They come five times a day to clean this place. Yeah, it's necessary, especially on the weekends when we have a high traffic on the charging parks there that is really necessary but also the difference so what we have the, the vending machines um, yeah you not understand how bloody sometimes can be people to yeah. understand the systems and we have to find a way how both work so it's unmanned amenity yeah. and have to be worked 24 hours a day and the people have to understand that and this is completely new so we created something new uh, one one people said to me there during a client meeting say okay you are the new mcdonald's yeah, yeah. you create a new uh, gastronomy there so a new restaurant concept yeah, yeah? And totally. they say, mainly yes yeah, it's completely new and have to be working every day. Yeah, I mean, from, from my perspective is, and I see, definitely have the same vision you have, starting small, getting in, but you could 
really set the standard and change the entire landscape of charging going forward with this concept. So let's go over. Let's go. Let's take let's a look. <laughs> um, now, this particular site, how long in the planning? Obviously, they have, I don't know, 10 or 12 or 16, I think 16 stations here. Well, there are 22 currently. Ah, OK, 22. 22. Yep, Pretty yep. big one then. Yep. Um, how long did it take for Tesla to tell you about this one? Did it did they start with you in mind from the beginning? Yeah, completely from the beginning. And the mainless time was uh, until then 12 months. OK, so wow. say, OK, we want to to build there the charging park together until the opening 12 months here. And that can be nine months to 18, 24 months. Sure. Yeah. So it's sometimes different regarding the building permit. Yeah, that's uh, the most difficult bottle, bottleneck there. Yeah. But with a solution like this, you're giving Tesla the flexibility to open a charging park in the middle of nowhere. They do not need to spend huge amount of money on prime real estate in a city area or even at a rest stop where there you know, is a lot of highly competitive land use. You can build one out in the middle of nowhere and right. then you're bringing the amenities here. This makes so much sense. Greenfield, so they can rent them very, very cheap. Yeah, the square meter or buy them very, very cheap. And you have the whole uh, infrastructure, the whole operations there. And uh, with that BK World, the whole amenity. So, and just so I totally understand this, when Tesla offered this site in partnership with you, do they help you upfront and pay you to put this here at all? Or is this completely a BK World investment? The investment is completely by 100% by us, so by me. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> yeah, completely, so nothing. No invest necessary from the CPO. Um, wow. And then we have a, a business model that we say, okay, we get a monthly fee from the CPO mm -hmm. and we give from all our turnover and ref share to the CPO. Ah, okay, so this way that there's a little bit of risk spread across both parties, because of course, especially when a charging park goes in today for the first time, the utilization will be quite low because you're planning for the future. Yep, yep, and yep. so how long do you typically look to recoup the cost? Is it a 25 year uh, plan? Is it 10 years? At what point will you become profitable? The, the, the point is to be profitable latest after five years. Oh, wow. That quick. Very okay. quick. So you're really planning for high traffic, lots of sales. And the main profit from you, your side is selling goods, selling food, selling drinks, selling coffees, anything else that yeah, you guys the sell? Toilets, the toilets there. And also we have mm -hmm. uh, separate advertisement agreements there uh, with mm -hmm. like Samsung, uh, for ah, example, okay. that's a huge partner for us. Yeah, or for the food and beverage products, so we have these partners. So there are separate channels. And yeah. of course, not to forget the pizza machine. Okay, I got to <laughs> ask you about the pizza machine because yeah. a couple of years ago when I was in Ense, yeah. this was the most exciting <laughs> bit. I almost cared more about the pizza machine than I yeah. did the hub. So how yeah. did you, did you create this? How did you find this? What What's up with the pizza machine? Yeah, so we, uh, it's, it's not that we uh, own, we are the owner um, uh, in the production company, uh, not yet. Uh, but uh, there is, uh, we, we sell them and we, we make the whole operations. Yeah, and that is, uh, yeah, it's uh, really cool. Uh, during four minutes, a perfect pizza. <laughs> yeah. So I, I remember when you when you have the video in in, in, in Ense, there wasn't the, the best quality. Yeah, but meanwhile, the quality is totally perfect. Yeah, we oh, okay. are, uh, the people are completely satisfied about that. So we find all the things. Uh, what will be <laughs> the difference? Uh, how we can we create the right pizzas inside and uh, make a uh, uh, bring a very high quality to the. Mm -hmm. People. These are the details that I care about. <laughs> Having really, you know, dialing in the perfect amount of cheese and temperature and amazing. So, you yeah. know, you everything is in this machine. You go on the screen, you can go use the toilet and then it's ready. It's ready, completely ready. Yeah. So do have, you have the four minutes. You have to, to, to choose there during uh, with, with uh, six pizzas there. There are inside yeah, when you when you have something um, and so you can choose there what you what you want. Mm -hmm. So you are vegetarian or you like meat or, or, or not uh, and something else. So you, you see that yeah, um, and you can create to, to break it hot or also cold. That's also possible. Uh, for example, we uh, was, want to sit together with your girlfriend in the evening and say, OK, let us make the pizza at home. But everything is completely closed. We have this possibility. This also work. Yeah, Amazing. it's completely new. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah, it's 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 my business. Meanwhile, yeah, so I'm the totally satisfied about the pizza machine. Yeah. yeah? And I, I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> I do, too. This is so cool. So when you hopefully come to the US, do you think the pizza machine can come as well? Yeah. 
100% sure. <laughs> Amazing. 100% sure. We don't go to, to, the, to the North America there yeah. without the pizza machine. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> then you are welcome to come to North so America. So we need a little big, uh, bigger ones <laughs> for, <laughs> yes. for the US market, but it will come. Amazing. So that is so cool. Uh, absolutely love this. So what a cool concept. So I have to ask, how did you come up? How did you find the pizza machine? How did this start? Uh, so there is uh, coming uh, the production company comes from France mm -hmm. there uh, and in, in France there was meanwhile uh, during this time two years ago more than thousand pizza machines in France. So they started this business 2009 so it wasn't a new business but it's completely new for Germany or in a lot of other countries it's completely new ah, so this and, was and already we picked them up. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Well congratulations yeah. on partnering with these guys and getting all that sorted. Yeah. So um, do a lot of people come and get pizzas that aren't charging? Because I know the hub, so I see a sign that says for electric car drivers only, This all these amenities are really meant to be for EV drivers. Yeah. But do people just come and get pizza? Yeah, a lot of a lot of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have, meanwhile, 70% of our turnover comes from the people who live here in, in the area okay. and say, okay, look at this for nine euro 90, yeah, 10 euros here. Yeah. You have a, a warm meat there yeah, mm -hmm. during four minutes. So a lot of truck drivers coming, young people coming in the evening, Saturday night or something else. Yeah. So yeah. we make a lot of turnover directly with the people with not EV drivers. Okay, but this is also good. Maybe when the site is at low utilization, you can still have revenue coming in even from the local area. Right, right. Okay, yeah. very So it cool. comes more and more like a petrol station. Yeah. And you say, okay, go here. Yeah, we have, uh, we have the pizza yeah, during all the time. We have food and beverage, very healthy ones, and, and, and so on. So that is a very good combination. Okay, let's go inside. Let's take a look at this. So you have, first of all, before we do it, on this sign, you, these are the services on offer. You have charging, 24-7 lounge with toilets, snacks coffee pizza kids area and i don't even know what that last one says so there is sustainability ah, okay yeah, very important thing there so the the whole construction and all the operations for the next 50 years there will be completely climate positive ah okay so from a construction standpoint can you walk us through how you build these because it almost is in the you know, it's not the size of a shipping container. It's much larger, but it seems yep. quite modular. So how did you come up with the idea to do all of this? Yeah, and so how does it work? So it's completely done by wooden, 100%. Mm -hmm. And with that, this is a very high coverage there of the, the CO uh, power there uh, for, for, for that. And so you, you cover this, uh, this during the wood. Mm -hmm. That is a very important. It is the best uh, material what you can use for that. Yeah, and then during for, for this, we also, how we construct uh, the thing on site, how we heat them, how we cool them yeah, with a heating pump system and recover okay. the, the dust air, yeah, the, the heating from the dust air outside, bring them again there in, inside and, and so on. So it's completely neutral, carbon neutral, uh, completely uh, constructed. Wow. And do you put solar on the roof as well or is there no need because the power consumption is so low? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It, it, it comes a little bit where it stands the BK world. So in the, in the half of the BK world uh, currently there, we have the solar power on the roof and the other ones not. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in terms of the design, so, so far I've seen the one in Ense, the, the pilot site. That one had a really cool look to it. This one certainly looks like it blends in more with the area, with the taller grass, looks really nice. Um, but then I've also just seen, you showed me some pictures of the actually Tesla branded ones. Yes. Can you tell us about that and maybe some other designs that you can do as well for other CPOs? Mm -hmm. So first of all, we are completely open to create our own design for a CPO. Yeah, so when other CPOs coming to us and say, okay, we need another uh, copyright identity or something else, can you do this? Yes, we can do. And for Tesla, we show them that it's now open two weeks uh, in, in Roar. It's in the north part of France. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the first launch we created together with Tesla, with the Tesla design team in the US. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there are completely changed to this one. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, first thing, you have not the entrance on the side. You go directly uh, in the front, yeah, in, okay. in the side. So it's not in, in the high anymore, it's completely on the ground floor. Yeah, and you have the, the portal, you go to the portal, you have the Tesla logo on the roof uh, and then something else. So it's 
completely different look and feel and that was we, what we created for, for the Tesla and it's the first one in the world. And the collaboration with Tesla on that was not just that you presented them the design, you were explaining to me that this was in collaboration with their design team as well. As well, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we, we design them and bring them to the US and they make the changes or the wishes. Yeah. We yeah, react on them yeah, and bring the new ones and then they, they check them again and then so on. So it was during five weeks of very, very hard daily work. So we created them during the, the, the German times, yeah, yeah. sent them to the US where we going to sleep and then in, in the morning we have that in, uh, in the inbox there again. Yeah. So you always have this day of just back and forth. And just based off the initial photos, it looks amazing. Amazing. I should go to France and check that site out at some point. Uh, maybe even this trip, I'll have the opportunity to do this. Yeah, yeah could yeah. be interesting. So um, it's amazing. It's amazing. The feedback is totally amazing from from this launch there. Yeah, hopefully you can see this yeah, very, very, very soon. Yeah, I would love to. Yeah, yeah. And so basically this design, this is your own design then, not in collaboration with Tesla in a sense, right? This one is completely done by you here. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was our mainly our first design. It's very similar what you see two years ago there in NC there in our first pilot uh, location. They are very, very similar. So this is our own design, uh, but not for the future. So mm -hmm. we also changed that uh, normal design uh, now and then bring them this year. Uh, in additional new BK World st uh, stations because we also changed our normal design. Okay, yeah. and uh, how modular is this? Are they easy to produce? Is each one different? Are they going to be the same going forwards? Obviously, you're learning right now. What is the future going to look like? It's very easy because the cube, so you see here three cubes. Mm -hmm. So one cube is always completely 100% the same. And there is only say, okay, the indoor will be completely different. So it's like a sanitary or they have the vending machines or you have the, the waiting area or something else. Or there can be another ones like hotels for drug charging. We need showers in, in inside and, and separate things there. Uh, then we, all of this is completely ready uh, by wow. us. Yeah, very but cool. the, the, the basic cube is always 100% the same. And so it's just very easy for us to have the production because currently we have the production of 250 BK World stations per year. Okay, yeah. already. Ready, yeah, we yeah. are ready. So we, we, we only need the orders. <laughs> yeah, we only need the orders. We are completely yeah. prepared. So CPOs, listen up. Listen let's, up. <laughs> let's, get, let's get moving. You can build 250 of these a year. And a year. right now you're doing 10, 15, 20, something like that. 10 to 15 currently. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So there's, I think we're going to see some orders after this. I hope, <laughs> I hope, because I, as an EV driver, this is what I want. Now, is this building over here yours? Or? Yeah, so that is very important because it's our supply cube, we, we call them. Ah. So inside there, we have, uh, there is a, a freezer in, inside, mm -hmm. so for the pizzas. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then uh, the, the cooling area uh, we have inside for all the food and beverage products. And then we have the, the preparation area. So you need them uh, for, for the healthy things to prepare them on the right side and so on. And everything is completely integrated here. So we have a 24 seven uh, logistics system so they can deliver us with the products uh, automatically go, go in. Mm -hmm. bring the products inside yeah and so there we need no stuff because it's completely unmanned everything here yeah, yeah? and so all the logistic is very important that they works 24 7 without any people yeah so the only people would be just cleaning manually right yep. this yep. is it yep. and is this something that you think you'll have at every station in terms of operation yeah it's really necessary to mm -hmm. have that the people yeah uh, really necessary yep. uh, for the cleaning we're working on on the systems for the future yeah but not by today mm -hmm. yeah yeah, great. Nice to see people using the station as well, which is awesome. So I think what we should do is uh, right now there's so many people inside. We'll let it clear out in a few minutes. Yeah. And yeah. then you can show it's us. It's completely around. fooled me. Yeah. I think you'd be careful. What is yeah. good? <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. People are using it. That means you have income coming in, which means you can build more of these. Yeah. And uh, I think it really uh, is such a good idea. So we'll let this place clear out. They come in ebbs and flows. There's waves of people. And then we'll go on a full tour of this particular lounge. Okay. Well, we've gone inside. We just asked everyone if they're okay to be on camera. They are. Yeah. So wow. We're good. The site is filling up. We've got the Norwegian guys over here charging the Skoda. We've, it's really exciting to see different EVs here. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that they're coming from all over the world there. Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah, or sitting in the car, rent a car and coming to here to charge. Yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see. Yeah, so you have to have, you have to consider language when you're building these as well, because you have a lot of international, different languages, and so, yeah, I'd love to learn more about what goes into the design, 
who came up with a lot of this stuff. So I, I guess from a from a design, do you have your own team that helps you with this? How does this work? Yeah, I have uh, mainly 45 employees there working like architects, designers and, and so on. And wow. we create this completely by our own. That is crazy. 45 yeah. people. That is a lot of time and effort and energy. So let's go inside. Let's show us. So this ramp, it's all pretty wheelchair friendly. The whole place is uh, ADA. Comple yeah, completely yeah. Yeah, by 100 percent. Yeah, that's very important that we have to, for the wheelchair drivers yeah, completely no steps. Yeah, and no for the case and so on. This one is open all the time at the moment. Yep. But if it's in a certain area where you need, because I remember at the first one, I had yep. a little scan or something here. Is this something you would adapt for the region? How does this work? Yeah, we are completely open and have all the different systems like QR code, like a number code, uh, or have to say, okay, you have to plug in in the car, the possibilities. So every system is completely prepared also here. So we only can make a hole. When we see, okay, it's not working, that is open 24-7. You know, we mm -hmm. have to regulate them uh, or special launches there for like Porsche, for example, and say, yep. okay, we only have to walk in Porsche drivers and not more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's completely working. Okay, and system. also security. So is there someone monitoring all of the lounges as well? Yeah, there's a automatically AI system behind. Wow. That is totally interesting. So we see that the, there is an automatically facility management what we do mm -hmm. Yeah, on, on the end. So we see, okay, what the people, somebody lies on the floor, say it's not normal. Right. That can be very dangerous. So with the immediately push message there, we get there on, on our call center directly and then they log in, in the system and look for that. Mm. Yeah, and we train that the this, this system say, OK, what is normal and what is not normal or okay. what have to be checked there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, children in France in a new launch there forgot a balloon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with yeah. A, a smiley from from the Disney Park in in Paris, yeah. and uh, the, the, she she lost them. Yeah, in, yeah. in the launch. Left the balloons. And, in and there, we yeah. have the balloon flying here, and the, the AI <laughs> say, "What is that? <laughs> I've never seen this before. <laughs> totally crazy. Yeah, but it's a training. It's new. It, it, it can happen." Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. That's pretty. <laughs> that is really cool. So I love the that AI is coming into the security yeah, it's, aspect. It's integrated. Yeah, 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 for us because we we are not here, so we can react. Yeah, yeah. short ways to come on or log in and we can to speak during the uh, speakers there. So for, from outside, from mm -hmm. the central side, we can ah, speak okay. and say okay, what happened or something else. So please do this, do yeah. this not and then so on. So that is completely working. And of course, you could always call the police if something crazy happens in the area. But um, you also have local staff that the cleaning staff and everything, they can have a secondary look on what's happening. And do they, let's say someone comes in here who's not driving an electric car, are they able to ask them to leave? How does this work as well? No, there is allowed. Mm -hmm. yeah, there is allowed uh, from our side that they come in, the, the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay for us. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not okay. only have to be regulated by EV drivers. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not necessary. Okay, great. Yeah. Good to know. All right, let's go in. Yeah. Let's explore. So really nice door, by the way. This is, a, you know, double pane, good insulation. Yeah. And does every BK World have a cool plaque like this? Tell us the story on this one. <laughs> Yeah, so every every BK World have a party, so that means he's the yeah the, the owner and the responsible people there of this this BK World. Yeah. And there is uh, Alex Bangula. It's a very very famous guy there from the German TV show Grit. Uh, so they test electric cars there in in Germany for for that, and he's living in a near. And we ask Alex uh, for for this station here in Lindau, yeah. and we have separate pardon there uh, mm -hmm. on the other stations. Yeah, it's working very well. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. So he's really the the local. <laughs> I would say, uh, you know, this is his BK world then. It's his BK world and you're yeah. responsible yeah, it mainly. Yeah, it's not me. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. So also noticing really great design in here. All of this is this. You guys came up with all of this look. Yeah, completely our design. Yeah. yeah created by us by 100 percent. Completely new. Wow. Yeah. It's really, really yeah. nice. And it's all it was what I said before, we are completely open to change that. Yeah. In a completely another design for other CPOs. Say, OK, we have the, the yellow color. Yeah. And we want to make more yellow instead mm -hmm. of uh, dark or something else so we are completely open like the same for for tesla there what we did but in terms of mass manufacturing this the core structure that is the part that you're able to get these out so quickly so can you walk us through how this is kind of constructed yeah so there is a uh, completely what you see here there is one cube from this side to here mm -hmm. so okay. mainly there are 10 meters long three meters on the bright yeah, and 3.80 meters high. 
And that is a very, very big important thing that we're regarding the container. This is not a container because mm -hmm. this is much higher than each container. Okay. Uh, but you need the feeling from the ceiling. So when you have the ceiling like on this level, yeah, you never have this, this huge uh, crazy feeling inside. So it's very important to create the, this this height for for that. Yeah. So we never want to be a container. Right. Yeah. We are a cube. A cube. Okay. A cube. It yeah. Makes sense. I like <laughs> it. <laughs> it's a cube, not a container. <laughs> okay. I hate container because we are not a container. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And but you're right. The height makes it feel so much airier and so much bigger than maybe it actually even is. It adds to this visual. Also, having the glass here gives it this feeling of being open. And I love that you can monitor the car charging. The other site that I went to as well, similar layout. Will most of them have a glass component like this? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All, all of them. It's very important that that it was our experience that uh, the owner of the cars want to see his car or mm -hmm. her car yeah, mm -hmm. during the charging. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's very important that we bring the window, especially to the charging area. Mm -hmm. And none of the people here are paid actors. These are just EV drivers that <laughs> <laughs> randomly came. But you can I, see I, the I, games I, are being I know, used. I don't know <laughs> <it's funny>. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, the games are being played here. There's a little so in the other place, there were a specific office area. Yeah. So is that something that you liked or didn't like? Because no, it's not part? working. Okay. It's not working, so we canceled them out yeah. uh, and created this this mini launch, uh, what, what, what we say to here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we have the, the Samsung frame um, mm -hmm. uh, integrated and there are separate uh, graphics on, on them working. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we bring in and uh, to, with something, it's a deal, it's a frame deal mm -hmm. that they bring all the, the Samsung frames and uh, the monitors to us. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we assist them. Yeah. It's like a okay. yeah. nice partnership. Nice partnership. Very, yeah. very well. Yeah. And working for all, uh, all the locations for all the BK worlds mm -hmm. all over the world. Okay. Yeah. Working for that. And what we can do is, is uh, meanwhile in NC that we created a pop-up store. That means we can change the walls, yeah? change mm -hmm. the ceiling. Um, and bring a pop-up store inside. Oh, yeah, completely. Nice. Yeah, and it's completely say so there can be everything uh, in inside. Want to show to to the people because the people sitting here, they're driving a very yeah expensive car. Yeah, of course. Sitting here for thirty minutes, mm -hmm. waiting area. Yeah. The audience. Yeah, and you can advertise them yeah. during 30 minutes. Yeah. There's so many cool different experiences and things that you can present to people during charging that will make it much more interesting and beneficial both to the driver and to you guys to utilize the space. I love that idea. That is yeah. really good. Yeah. That is really good. And so, of course, you have a seating area, a lounge area. I've seen so many people using this one, even just in the couple hours that we've been here. Yeah. Was this always the intention to have a, a, a seating area like this? Yeah, that's always our, our experience and it's working very well. So we, we hate tables and chairs. So we make it like a launch mm -hmm. character, yeah, and it is very, very good uh, and, and important for us that we have this and everybody feels free. They can plug in, charge their, charge mm -hmm. their screens, their iPads or, or something else, um, their iPhones. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's completely open for that. They can yeah. bring on the, like a little table there on the height there. Yeah, yeah so bring this is really great. For the, for the cup of coffee, yeah. Yeah, looking on their cars, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you told me the story earlier, but I want our audience to learn. <laughs> <laughs> you what, a, what is it? <laughs> yeah. You have your own fire extinguishers? <laughs> yeah, it's our own fire extinguishers. I hate the red fire extinguishers. I hate them totally. <laughs> yeah. The only thing is, this is there, you, you need the red signage. Yep. Yeah. The, you can't change that, the red signage. It's okay. important. But what uh, we have the, the certification together with, with Minimax mm -hmm. uh, to bring the powder, the black powder on that and bring our own design by the BK World and create the certified, certificated fire extinguisher. That's crazy yeah, that you did yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have my lovely black fire extinguisher instead of red. <laughs> it's so cool. It's also working for the US market. Really? It's allowed there it's as well? Allowed. Okay. It's allowed. It's allowed. International certification. Wow. How about that? Very <laughs> cool. So I'm just looking as well. You have these little portals, these little access holes around. What are those for? Electrical or what is behind those? No, there is uh, the thing that we say, okay, when we, when we bring a cube to another side, so we can open, make these flaps open and there are screws. Mm -hmm. So four screws per, per cube, bring them and uh, break the gran on the top mm -hmm. and, and take them away. Them. And yeah. so the experience, what we did in, in, in one charging park uh, currently, one BK world, we bring them during 24 hours to another place. 
Oh, okay. You had to move them for yeah, 24 hours. We moved hours. them. We moved yeah. them completely during yeah. 24 hours. So bring yeah. them, take it, the screws, yeah, the grain on the, on the, uh, on the truck and bring them out of way. And drop and them somewhere else. Drop them, yeah, cleaning the area, the property, mm -hmm. yeah, and you see nothing 24 hours later. Wow, that is really impressive. So we've activated the restrooms, we've tapped, the light went green. Yep, now, now, it's, we, now it's red. <laughs> yep, now it's red, it yeah. resets. <laughs> Go inside there. So we have the, the signage, and again, it's all ADA friendly all the way back here. Yeah, and this is the, the toilet for the, for the wheelchair drivers there. Yeah. yeah. And it's completely by law, so you have the space there, yeah, the holders there completely, completely working. And then you have the, the baby changing station, yeah, for, for that. So everything is prepared completely, yeah. You have the, for the rest there to clean. <laughs> I love yeah. the you are awesome you sign. Are. <laughs> <laughs> you are awesome sign there. Yeah. yeah, there is for the wheelchair drivers or regarding the, that they see them completely there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so everything is completely prepared. We have the, the, the place there and it's completely for the maintenance. So it's a special material. So we can break with the hammer on the top, nothing. Okay, yeah. interesting. It's completely for the maintenance part and it's built and constructed minimum for the next 50 years. Wow. So okay. we have no maintenance issues during the next 50 years. That's pretty incredible. And I'm sure it's pretty easy to clean if someone comes in and does something crazy and starts writing on the walls and stuff. I mean, you have to plan for so many different situations. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Everything is working. And you so in, in the toilets, in the restroom, yeah, you see the monitor yeah, is also working yeah, with, a, with a screen <laughs> with, mm -hmm. with yeah. uh, some information regarding the BK world. It would be fun if you could somehow tie it in so you can monitor your charge. So <laughs> yeah. you could say, okay, I'm charging on 4A and you can watch your car charge yeah, what, while, what, you're, <laughs> while you're sitting on so, so nearby everything is part of a car. And I have to point out, you showed me earlier, this is not a camera. No, it's not a camera. <laughs> so, so some people say to bring the toilet paper because they thought yeah. it will be a camera, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so maybe Maybe in the future, okay, you could just not have that one there, yeah. just to not freak people out. No, we can't listen yeah. now, we say experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, things that you learn along yeah, the way. Yeah, we learn about it. Yeah. And this is just all so nice with the backlighting everywhere, you have a, a washing situation. And you know, yet it's, it's important to remember, this is just one cube. So you're working with very limited area, but you have full functionality of you know, water and sewage and everything is taken care of. And is this tied into the local infrastructure into the area or can it be completely off grid or how does that work? That can be completely different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Off grid is possible, it's not necessary. So each cube can work completely by their own. Okay. So this also were regarding the modular system that we start with one cube, integrated everything. Yeah, there's the mini cube version integrated the restroom, uh, the vending machines and a little seating area that is that is possible. Really? But yeah. we can expand then more and more and bring an, another one only with, uh, with the restroom service that's completely open. Well, thank you for the tour of the restrooms. <laughs> this was and also the fire extinguisher. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course, gotta, gotta have the black fire extinguisher. <laughs> of course, this is what EV drivers probably care about the most. We already discussed the pizza machine, but also having other amenities What's really cool, you have to show us how this all works because this is even different process than in the previous BK world that I visited. Yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is a, there is a system, yeah, you have the, the monitor, see the products, what, what are inside, uh, all of them. Uh, and what, so there is a freezer uh, with the ice cream um, and we have uh, separate food and beverage products there, sweets, uh, chocolate and, 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 and so on very healthy food and uh, organic food uh, that's very important for us not only the mainstream products what you see everywhere yeah, on, on the highway stations there that's completely different and how it works there so you have the, um, your credit card you go on this there is an authorization uh, for for that not a BK world issue. This is an iPhone face ID issue. <laughs> <laughs> face, face ID issue. Yeah. Okay. That, that's the thing. Yeah. So then it, it check. Okay. It's out of sized. Then you can open the door mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, take out your product. So what, what do you want there? Yeah. So yeah. we take, they take this two of yep. them and then you close the door and then there is an inventory a scan to check that and see is it on the screen. Yeah. And say, okay. Then right. Oh yeah, sorry. 
Then they count them, you see them on the screen mm -hmm. and say, okay, there are you buy this pro uh, two products mm -hmm. in and total the cost. and that's all. Amazing. That is really cool. And so it's working with these little tags. Yeah, there are these little text there on the top there of the of all the products. So you can fill the the, the freezers there or the the, the, um, the cooling units there completely free mm -hmm. with the products where you want. And this, this is the only thing. And when you take them out, so, something like this, then it's like broken mm -hmm. and you say, okay, the product is missed and you charge to them. Okay. To you. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody can say, okay, I can take the text out uh, yeah. with me yeah. yeah, and then it's not charging anymore and bring them on, on the top. That's yeah. not possible. Very cool. Yeah. So, I mean, really, these things are very well thought out, of course. And in terms of like the volume of EV drivers that you're serving, having, again, someone come and load these fridges once a day, twice a day, this is not a lot of manpower needed. This is just a few hours of work yeah. throughout the yeah. day. Yeah. So there was, meanwhile, it was, it's depending on the charging, um, the frequency of, of that. So is there a lot of people inside or something else? But there we, we're talking about two to three hours a day. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. very, very what, little. What is necessary for yeah. refilling the pizza machine outside and then so on. So mm -hmm. we need the stuff on site, especially for regarding the sanitary area for the restroom cleaning. That's the main important thing. Mm -hmm. And um, are you also tracking the metrics of how many EV drivers are coming in? Is there a way through these AI cameras to look at conversion rates and plan, you know, ROI on building more of these in the future? Is this something you're doing? Yeah, that's completely integrated there on the camera system. So we see they count the people like it's the same like a retail stores where we where we're coming from. So mm -hmm. you see, OK, how many people go in there? So there is a measurement. What are people, man or woman? Mm -hmm. the, the age of them cluster in five years cluster. Mm, uh, so okay. we see them. Yeah. So how many come in and then we see, okay, how many sellings? Yeah, it is mm -hmm. very uh, easy yeah, to yeah. see, okay, how many coffees, uh, how many drinks and then something else. Yeah. And so we have the completely conversion rate and that is a unique experience during meanwhile, more than two years. Yeah. What, what we have. Yeah. Okay. And we are the, yeah, the number one. So we have all the data. We know what is yeah. working and, and, and then no one yeah. else has anything no like else. this for charging. No, not Nobody. anywhere on the planet. Nobody in the world. Yeah. Cause we're just starting to see, okay, maybe the Porsche charging lounge, that Mercedes charging lounge in the U S that we saw, but this is for a very specific brand, which has a very specific demographic. You're not going to see very many 23 year olds driving $200,000 Tycons as yeah. an example. Yeah. So here you really get to see everyone because this is a supercharger open to all drivers. Drivers. And so you really get a good picture as to who are the people road tripping an electric car through Europe. Yeah, so you have the whole audience yeah, and regarding like Tesla is open for all EV cars there. So we, we, we see them yeah, and see the experience. So it's not only Tesla drivers. So it's the whole community like electric car drivers. So you also have coffee as well. This looks like a pretty nice coffee machine. Yeah, so. as, as well there. Yeah. So there were all sorts of coffee, uh, cappuccino and, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so you can take them away. Say, look at like this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you, uh, you choose the coffee and bring it to here. And it's the same thing like, uh, okay, I have the Apple, Apple pay, but you can do it uh, the same time with your credit card directly. Yep. That's all thing. And then there are authorization and Amazing. then it starts. I mean, it's so nicely integrated that in the US, we don't really have stuff like this. <laughs> in Germany, <laughs> yeah, especially in you know more modern places, you can tap and pay for things, but to have it completely unmanned, this is so unique. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen anything like this. With, with the personal, there, there will be no business model working mm -hmm. with that. So yeah. the stuff there are, they are completely explode everything. Yeah. Uh, so you need this unmanned amenity. That's, that's the, the, the key. But the complication is that you see that so many countries, so many languages and, and so on. So you're not can uh, written there something uh, you have to do this uh, in, in yeah. Germany or something else. Uh, yeah. You have to be working international. A lot of people, you have young people are uh, sitting on the Nintendo Switch there. Yeah. Uh, but you have older people with uh, 70 years driving EVs there. And for all the people have to be worked. Uh, yeah. and that's the complicated thing uh, for the operation. So also the restrooms, the toilets over here, you have uh, a week wheelchair friendly room. I think there's some people in there, so we won't go over. But, um, you know, just how does the idea of the toilets work? Is that its own cube? Yep. So it's, a, it's the same one as you see here in Linda, three cubes in total. Mm -hmm. And one of them will be the, the cube for the restrooms. Mm -hmm. So you have the separate restrooms uh, in inside, one for, for the wheelchair drivers 
um, and this is uh, created by one cube only integrated uh, the sanitaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'll definitely make sure we show our viewers that. We're not going to go in now, but once it's all open, then yeah. we'll show everyone this. But is there anything else inside here that you want our viewers to consider? Or maybe some, I guess from my question is, there's so much work that went into making this a modular system that is certified in different regions that you can change the CI to look like whatever you want. What are some of the, the reasons someone would choose to partner with BK World over just building their own specific lounge? Yeah, 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 yeah. So what I want to say to this one, <laughs> a little bit open for that. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, the main thing is that we say, okay, when you, when you look back in the history, you, have, you build petrol station, you sell petrol, and everybody knows, meanwhile, with petrol, you not can make the money. Mm -hmm. You need a shop for that, and for a shop, you make the money. And that is the same what we bring now on a charging station. We bring a shop system completely working unmanned, so you have the personal cost on that. And the, for the CPO, you not only install the chargers, you have a completely experience for that. During the night, you have a toilet completely cleaned. Yeah? We have food and beverage products. Yeah? They can sit in the launch, they can play Mario Kart, they can sit here, eat, eat pizza, yeah? working on, on a notebook there, check the emails and then something else. So we have, we have an experience for this 20, 30 minutes yeah? sit, sitting in. And that makes it completely different. And for me, I not understand when a CPO opens a charging park without an amenity. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, I crazy. not understand this. Yeah, or they pay to McDonald's or something else, pay them a rent. Yeah, for our system, they get a ref share from all our turnover. What we did here, they get a ref share. Yeah, and that is a, the business model for the future. Yeah, I think so as well. It takes that initial investment of building one of these things, trying to design it, make this whole cube system that you've done and honestly better. And it's so high quality in here, like the floors don't give way. Everything is really solid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it would take so much engineering time and effort for someone to go and build their own thing when, from my perspective, they could partner with you. And like you mentioned, it's not like you're operating the store. The CPO gets the benefit as well. Yeah, as well, as well. Yeah. So. All of our of our turnover, we give a ref share to the to the CPO. Yeah, this makes so much sense. And he has nothing to do with that. Yeah, he gives their audience the experience and say, okay, this is this is huge and this is uh, unique. Yeah, for, uh, currently, and I have a ref share for for me. Nothing to do with that. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. a future model in my eyes. Yeah, I think so as well. I mean, I really think, especially with charging stations on the rise, I mean, you could be the next main provider, like a petrol station, you know, in the US, we would have, I don't know, Bucky's or something like this, where they're, of course, having a fuel supplier, but also the experience while you're fueling. Mm -hmm. This could go so big, this could be so huge. And I know right now it's very early days for this side of your business, but we were also discussing this for BK World could really be the next big wave of business for you guys. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, there's in, in, in my, my company, so we have still the retail, they're where we're coming from, the, from the planning, the construction and the retail. This is uh, for the future also our one part of our core business, but this is an add on the BK World business. Yeah? And we can bring it everywhere in the world, like China, India, Japan, North America, Canada, New Zealand, yeah, there are no limits uh, yeah. in, in our eyes and we can make the operations also in this country. So, so that is what we do for our big, huge retail companies there uh, that we that we operate there in uh, currently 33 countries there all over wow. the world. So it's not new for us. So the BK world to understand this is not a startup. Yeah, this is only from a uh, for my company, for a huge uh, company, a market leader company, an additional new field. If you were not an EV driver, or I should say, let me phrase this another way. If you had BK World or didn't even have BK World, let's say you were an EV driver and you wanted to do this, this idea, would it have been possible without having an existing business of understanding retail and having you know access to the funds to put in money? You've put in a lot of money, of course, I can tell in something like this. This isn't something just a normal person could do. What do you think? No, it's not possible. Yeah. Completely impossible. So I know all the way 
until today. Yeah? And it's, it's completely impossible. Without the experience, the sign team for building permits, uh, prepare the planning, the construction, you need the broad production line there completely yeah, to, to create the cubes, to create the inside. Yeah? You need the workers, you have to check them. Then all the works on site, the construction on site. This is, this is one thing. But the other thing is the, the daily operations. Uh, and this is, this is huge, completely yeah. huge. Only this, this little thing like uh, payment terminals. How does it work completely 24-7? This is an easy question, but it's the most complicated thing during the last two years. Really? This system. These payment terminals. These payment terminals working yeah. for all the machines 24-7 with all the credit cards system and, 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 and. It's so crazy. Yeah? And you can't do this with this experience and the background that you say, okay, I bring the planning, the construction, the maintenance service, bring them from the company together with us. And so we bring 90% of them. We have that since 25 years yeah. and we have to add on this 10%. But another one starts by zero and have to bring 100%. So in my eyes, it's completely un impossible. Yep, and I think um, th none of this would have happened, of course, even if you had BK World, if you didn't drive electric. The thing that I'm most excited about this is you're not doing this just to make money. I mean, I'm sure you could find other ways to make a lot more money for the business, yeah. but this really comes from the passion of EV drivers to support them, to make charging really possible. Do you want to talk a little bit about your like why this is so needed? What made you come up with, you know, doing something like this? Yeah, so I start as an EV driver 14 years ago. I buy my first Tesla. So I love Tesla, official. Yeah, yep. I'm a fan of Tesla and still driving Tesla. Yep. Yeah, but I see what I say, okay, it will be a nightmare. You can't charge them during the night, completely in the dark, five, 800 meters to a petrol station, working to uh, trucks, uh, drivers and, and so on. So for women, it's completely impossible during the night and so on. So, okay, we need a transformation in our mobility, yeah, a sustainable transformation. And for that, I, this is my part, what I bring. Say, okay, make the charging parks, the EV, the transformation, and I bring the amenities and make a feeling for, for that. This is my why, why I do this. Yeah. It, and I love this. Yeah, and that is what gets me so excited is that this really comes from passion. It comes from spotting a problem and taking the resources you already had as you know the CEO of a major company to bring those resources and make the best possible charging lounge. For, totally independent, just my view yeah. as an EV driver. Uh, there's nothing better that I've ever seen than this for yeah, yeah. you know charging in greenfield sites in the middle of nowhere. So I have to say a big congratulations to you for doing this. A big thank you for the EV driver community. And I'm glad companies like Tesla and other CPOs to come have recognized the work that went into this and made it really possible for you to build something pretty incredible. So let us do a much more BK Worlds all over the world. Yeah, all CPOs what are looking this this video. Yeah, please let us this this possibility to transform the the mobility to EV driving. Yeah, because we only have one planet and we all of us have to save them. Yeah. Well, thank you for the time and thank you for meeting me all the way down here, technically on a vacation. <laughs> you <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> just, just got back from Iceland. So this is pretty amazing. Yeah. And uh, we'll leave everyone now. I mean, I just think, you know, if you guys want to see this in your market, in your country, at your charging, reach out to your CPOs, send them this video. Why not? Uh, doesn't doesn't hurt to make people more aware. And uh, a huge thank you to you for joining. This was really great. Kyle, thank you very much yeah, for coming yeah, to Germany yeah, that we take this video and hopefully now we can bring the BK world all together yeah, around the world. Amazing. Well, we'll see you guys on another Out of Spec Reviews video soon. I leave you now from, well, a Mario game with a lounge with a beautiful charging park in front of me. Definitely, I think, could be a major future comp or player, I should say, in the EV charging game. See you on another Out of Spec video soon. Bye-bye.